guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'll talk to you about applying for medicine in the UK. I've split this video into three parts. In the first part, I'll talk about my personal experience and my background, where I applied and how I got into Cambridge. The second part will be on personal statement and some of my tips on how to nail it. And the last part will be about interview. I'll give you some types of questions which you might expect during your interview. Make sure to subscribe and if you have any questions you would like to ask me, please put them in the comments below or direct message me. I'll be happy to answer them all. So firstly, let's talk a bit about my background. I applied for medicine uh, in the UK twice and after the first time I got rejected. I didn't receive an interview at any of my choices. So I started studying medicine here in Poland where I come from. Uh, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting and I still had this dream of going to Cambridge uh, at the back of my head so I applied again and this time I got an interview at all of my choices um, which were um, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial and King's and I got an offer also at all of them so I think a good lesson from this whole story is to never give up on your dreams and Really, if you want something, just have the courage to follow it, no matter what the obstacles will be. Okay, so the next uh, part of the video will be some of my tips on writing a personal statement. So I came up with six tips that I want to give you on how to write a personal statement for medicine. There is no one specific structure which will be the best. No one will tell you what that is. It has to be your own story, your own personal statement, and you have to decide, you have to collect all of your, all the things you want to put in, make some flowchart, mind map, whatever that is. Just try to organize your thoughts, chunk it into some specific themes. When I was writing my personal statement, I decided to divide it into paragraphs, each tackling a different area. So for me, that was first the introduction, in which I was uh, explaining how my whole motivation and passion to become a doctor uh, started. Then I focused on my scientific achievements. Third paragraph in my case was uh, volunteering. The next one, uh, work experience, then extracurricular things. I don't say that's the perfect structure. There is no a perfect structure. You need to find out your own way, but still make it organized. When you're applying for medicine, there are certain qualities which you should show that you possess. By showing, I mean explaining how the things you did or your volunteering work experience allowed you to develop this. It's really not about saying just what you did, but rather linking it to how it influenced you, how it allowed you to develop certain skills or to see what the doctor's profession is like. Second tip. Don't limit your words first. Just write everything you want to say. All of your extracurricular stuff, all the volunteering, uh, working experience, everything you want to say, just go for it. Even if it will be two pages long. You first need to collect all of your thoughts, then to be able to select the ones which you want to keep in it. If you start limiting yourself at the beginning, you can end up not writing things which are actually crucial. Introduction is the hardest part, at least it was for me. It's really tricky because it must be catchy, it must be interesting. And when you start thinking about this all, how good it has to be, then you can really get caught up in one place and don't move on. Obviously, if you've already had this introduction in your head for a longer time, go for it. That's completely fine. But if not, just leave it and move on to the next part. After you start writing your personal statements, some ideas will come to you and trust me, you will find the perfect introduction. If you don't have many things to add into your personal statement, that's completely fine. But if you do, don't be tempted to put everything in. It's not good to just throw everything into this personal statement without explaining much about the things you did. Boasting isn't a way to get in, so try to write out everything at the beginning, but then choose the most relevant things, those which you think made the biggest contribution. It's really important to make it all coherent. Don't just write separate paragraphs and then leave them as some chunks. 
remember they really have to link and it really must be a flow of thoughts the best personal statements are those which just flow and have a really nice story kind of behind it that might sound a bit vague but generally when you start writing your personal statement uh, you'll realize how many people add some quotes or some sophisticated phrases and you might feel tempted to do this too if you honestly have a quote that was important to you and influenced somehow how you think then go for it but if not don't try to find it by force there's no a recipe for a perfect personal statement and don't feel like you have to add something okay so the last part is interview so first of all what are the two main types of interviews for medicine so there's uh, a traditional interview which is also called a panel interview when uh, one two people uh, are interviewing you or the other type are MMI multiple mini interviews basically the main mistake people make is thinking that those two types of interviews are actually different the only difference is in the way they are structured in the MMI's you don't talk to one person you switch stations every couple of minutes and in traditional interviews you speak to the same people during the whole interview but there is not much difference between the two types of interviews when it comes to questions you will, which you will be asked some people might find one or the other type of interview more convenient but remember that the things they test are exactly the same so I experienced both of those types of interviews uh, traditional at Cambridge, UCL and Imperial and the MMI at King's and I came up with some tips on what kind of things you should focus on when preparing for an interview. Okay, so first and foremost, why do you want to study medicine? That's an obvious question which you will probably be asked at every interview. Make sure you have the specific answer. I don't want to say learn it by heart, but make sure you know it and you won't be trying to come up with that sitting in front of your interviewer so yeah apart from that make sure you also know why don't you want to be a scientist but actually a doctor know your personal statement inside out i couldn't stress this more you really need to know what you've written in this personal statement starting from the basic things like volunteering work experience but also if you've written about any book or article or something like this you really need to know what it was about and try to make some more thinking about this so things like why you enjoyed this or what surprised you in that book they can most certainly ask you about things from a personal statement and expand on them just print out your personal statement and highlight every single thing that you think they could ask you about then think about them as broadly as you can put yourself in shoes of this interviewer and ask yourself what they could possibly ask you about every single aspect of your personal statement there are some certain skills which you need to possess and develop to become a doctor and also to apply for medicine something like organization and time management skills teamwork, empathy, so I would highly recommend you list them all and then after you list them try to think about what did you do in order to develop that skill. Some of the universities like to ask you about your BMAT essay, it might be a little daunting especially if you don't remember your essay as I did, but don't worry they will either quote the essay question again and then they will ask you to evaluate on that or they will just start a conversation with you on that topic the other possibility is that they will print you out the BMAT essay beforehand and that you will get it just before the interview so that you can read it again news is something they can ask you also about so just make sure you read some BBC help so that if they ask you for example tell us something you've recently read about so that you're not stuck or you have to come up with a news on your own but you're actually able to say something there are really useful resources on uh, NHS website so I'll include them in the description below and just have a look at them but please remember you're not expected to know them very in depth so don't overdo it and don't think you really need to be an expert in medical ethics no just read about those four basic principles 
autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice and simply be able to wrap your hand around some questions related to this. It's rather tricky to prepare for because you simply don't know what you can be asked for. You don't want to go over your whole syllabus from biology, chemistry and math because you really don't know what you can be asked for. It doesn't make sense. It's better if you spend that time on doing some mock interviews. But what I can recommend is try to find some simple graphs or diagrams and just ask yourself some questions about it. Something related to statistics or the trend that this graph is showing. Maybe that you'll be given something like this and it will be asked to interpret it or say what's wrong with that. The important thing is to remember that that could be something that you want to understand. That might be a piece of information from a paper that's way beyond your knowledge. But this will be done on purpose to see how you think in stressful situations or how you extract something from a very complicated and difficult piece of information. The last type of questions which I called questions out of blue are the questions which you really can't prepare for, you really can't expect them and they're basically to test how you think and that could be something really weird like you'll get a picture and you have to describe this or you could be given some object which will be just lying on the desk and will be asked to describe it basically what this whole type of question is about is testing how you think how you describe what you see which is also super important in medicine so just try to take a step back and describe something from the beginning to the end the two most important tips which i could give you are first practice 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 talk to everyone you can ask your family members your teachers your friends whoever you can to give you some questions or you can give them a list of questions the more you talk the more you'll get used to this and the better your interview will go and tip number two is relax i know easier said than done but really that's something you need to work on try to treat this interview as a normal conversation if that's an old bridge interview think that the people who are interviewing you those might be your future supervisors those people really want to get to know you and just see how you think what kind of person you are so smile be positive and just show them what a cool person you are and that they will regret if they don't take you Okay, I think we've reached the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have any other questions about the application process or medicine uh, in Cambridge or anything else, please leave this in the comments below and see you in my next video. Bye!